In this video, we'll look at how to deploy NativeScript apps to iOS devices using NativeScript Sidekick. Sidekick offers two different workflows for deploying iOS applications, one for free Apple accounts and another for paid Apple accounts. The free account workflow is great for getting started, and I cover that workflow in a separate video, which you can find here. The big limitation of free accounts is that you cannot deploy your iOS apps to the App Store. For that, you do need to upgrade to a paid account, which at the time of this recording is $99 per year. So to follow along with this video, you do need to enroll in that program, which you can do at developer.apple.com account. Now I'll start by warning you that these deployment workflows can be kind of tricky. They're really considered one of the hardest things to set up for iOS development, regardless of what technology you're using. There are three big concepts you need to learn. The first is certificates, which identify you either as an individual or as your company. The second is app identifiers, which are just unique strings to identify your apps. And the third is provisioning profiles, which just associate the certificates and the app identifiers. In this video, we'll tackle each of these three concepts in turn and look at how you can deploy your apps to iOS devices using these concepts. Let's go ahead and get started. The first thing you need to do is visit Apple's portal for dealing with certificates, app IDs, and provisioning profiles, and you can reach that at developer.apple.com account. It's worth bookmarking this page as it's not the easiest URL to remember, and you'll need to visit this portal more than once. Start by clicking this box, which takes you to Apple's portal for dealing with certs, app IDs, and profiles. The default page you start on is for certificates, so that's where we'll start. And to create a new one, you'll want to hit this plus button. There are a variety of different certs that you can create, but the two most common ones that meet most situations are the certs for iOS application development and the one for App Store distribution. You'll eventually want to create separate certs, one for iOS app development and one for iOS app distribution, but let's start with a development cert. To create a cert, you need to create what's known as a CSR, or a Certificate Signing Request. To create this file, you normally have to use the Keychain Access application on a Mac, but you can also create a CSR in Sidekick. To do that, head back to Sidekick, open the Tools menu, and click this CSR option. You'll need to input your name, your email, your country, and then go ahead and click this Create CSR button. Give the CSR a name. I'll go ahead and call this one development and save it to your machine. At this point, you have the CSR file that you need for uploading in the Apple Development Center. So back in your browser, you can now hit continue and then upload that CSR file here. Next, click continue. And at this point, you have a certificate that you can download and store. Back in Sidekick, you'll need to import that CER file and give it a password. Sidekick generates a .p12 file, which is really just a specially formatted and encrypted file that contains your development certificate. I'll call mine development. You'll want to keep track of this file, as well as the password you use to encrypt it, as it's one of the files you'll need to build your applications. And at this point, you're halfway there. You now have a certificate that you can use to sign the iOS apps you create. If you'd like, you can head back to the browser, click this Add Another button, and create a second certificate for App Store distribution. The steps are exactly the same. You just need to make sure to click this radio button instead. With certificates out of the way, let's next talk about both provisioning profiles and app identifiers. We'll start with app identifiers, which are really just strings that uniquely identify an application. By convention, these identifiers use something known as reverse domain notation. For example, suppose I wanted to build an app for the progress blogs, which live on the web at blogs.progress.com. For apps, you reverse this domain name. So you would use com.progress.blogs for an app ID. In Sidekick, you can view and change your app IDs at any time. Just enter your app and click the Properties tab and check out this form field here. Once you're happy with the app ID you're using, go ahead and return to the Apple Development Center and click this App IDs tab, then this plus button to create a new one. Now, there are a few different form fields on this page. The first value Apple's looking for is just a really simple description of the app. 
So this isn't the reverse domain name notation. It's just a standard ID for your app, usually your app's name. After that, you have to choose between using an explicit app ID or a wildcard app ID. Explicit app IDs identify one unique application, and wildcard app IDs are used to identify multiple apps within a single domain. Now, as Apple notes here, you need to use explicit IDs if you want to leverage any of Apple's services, such as Game Center, in-app purchases, push notifications, and so on. Because most applications need at least one of these services, it's usually best to go with an explicit app ID. And that's what we'll do by putting in our bundle ID, or the reverse domain name notation, in this text field here. But if you're not planning on leveraging any of these services, you might want to set up a wildcard app ID using something like org.nativescript.star in this field here. If you are planning on using any of those Apple services, you will have to explicitly tell Apple about that using these checkboxes here. For example, if you knew you were going to use HealthKit, you would check this checkbox here. And when you're all set, head down to the bottom of the page and continue and then register. With that, we're almost ready to go through the third and final task of this video, and that's setting up provisioning profiles. But there's one quick step we have to do first, and that's on this Devices tab. During development, Apple requires you to register every device you plan to deploy your apps to, up to 100 devices. To do that, you'll want to hit this plus button, give your device a name, and enter the device's UDID. Now, if you've never heard the term UDID, you're not alone. And in fact, the way to find this identifier is actually a little bit crazy. What you need to do is open iTunes on your development machine with your iOS device connected via USB. From there, click the device to go to its summary screen here and find this serial number. If you click on this serial number, just a regular left click, your device's UDID will show up. You can even right click to copy the UDID to make your life a little easier. Back in the developer portal, enter that UDID here and click continue to register your device. And with that, you're finally ready to create provisioning profiles for your applications, which you can do on this tab here. Now again, provisioning profiles are best thought of as the thing that ties all the things we've been doing so far together, specifically certificates, app IDs, and devices. You create a new provisioning profile by clicking this plus button. Like certificates, there are a few different types of provisioning profiles that you can create, but the big ones are again iOS application development and App Store distribution. Eventually, you'll want to create provisioning profiles for each, kind of like we did with certificates, but we'll start with development. Remember that provisioning profiles are really what just ties all of these things we've done together. So you first need to select the app ID you want the profile to be for. So I'll pick the simple app ID that I created earlier. Next, you'll need to create the certificate. I've got some from testing, but you'll probably only have one listed there. The devices you want to test your application on, usually it's safe to just pick all of them you have registered. And then you'll need to give your profile a name. At this point, your profile is set up, so you'll want to download it locally. And at this point, all the steps that you need to perform in the iOS Developer Center are complete. To actually use these files, you'll want to head into your app and click this little cog button for the device you want to deploy your application to. For your certificate, select the P12 file that you saved to your machine earlier. And for the provisioning profile, select the .mobile provision file you just downloaded a second ago. With that, select your device, click Run on Device, Enter the password for the certificate you created earlier. And at this point, you're ready to go. Sidekick is currently building your application in the cloud using the certificate and the provisioning profile that you just set up. This process will take a few minutes as Sidekick does need to perform a full iOS application build. And you can check the status of that build in this output panel here. When you're ready to publish your apps out to the iOS App Store, you can use this Publish menu and upload the certificate and provisioning profile you intend to use for distribution here. And that's it. At this point, you set up the certificates, provisioning profiles, and app identifiers you need both to deploy your apps during development and also to deploy your apps to the iOS App Store. These processes can be tricky, especially if you're new to mobile development. So if you do run into problems as you're going through these steps, feel free to reach out for help in the NativeScript community forum. 
which you can find at forum.nativescript.org. Thanks for watching, and good luck developing your Nativescript apps.